Photogrammetry is the art of taking a bunch of photos of an object just revolving around it, and then extracting a 3D model by guessing where the cameras would have been and then just doing a bunch of points and connecting them, whatever. That process is called photogrammetry. Ironically though, in the last video I talked about image to 3D, these kind of like new AI models that take a single view and then guess what the 3D model would have looked like, and indeed they are getting good, but when it comes to like a one for one, I want this and I need to know what it looks like from every angle, photogrammetry is still king. So in this video I want to show you an add-on I made. It does photogrammetry red in blender but to balance it out i will also show you a fully free option so that the the, the scales are, are balanced okay this video is sponsored by squarespace and we are going to talk about that later so here i have a data set i actually have multiple where i took a concrete block and i just kind of walked around it took a bunch of photos there's a few rules when it comes to this you never want to photograph something that's shiny so no gloss no reflective but also no transmission and in some of these data sets i totally did not follow that rule you can see on this floor there's a bit of a specular highlight generally you want to avoid that. So I have a concrete data set, a coffee data set, and a banana data set. Now for my add-on, and also for the free version, it is good practice to get rid of these parentheses over here. This is many times not a valid uh, file path. So this is concrete, this is concrete2, etc. And here's a quick chat GPT script that does this for us. Love it. And let's run that bad boy now. And boom, all our images are renamed. So starting off with the add-on I made, let me show you how to do this directly in Blender, and then I'll show you a second option that is slower, admittedly, but does the same thing. So when you install my add-on, it's called Blender Photo scan. You're going to hit the end panel and you're going to see photo scan. To use this add-on, you need kind of a working directory. So I'm going to save my blend file. It's kind of arbitrary where you save it, but it has to be on your computer. And then it's going to say, what is your data set? So we give it our data set. We pick some options and we hit run. For our data set, let's start with the concrete. Remember, that's the one with all of these images. Click accept. I'm going to start by running it on low quality. And to preview what is happening over here, I added a console kind of like debug feature that I can put on the side so that when I hit photo scan, we can see the whole process. And this is literally it. It's the, the extent of what you need to do is load your images and then hit run. And as it says over here, right now it's doing both a sparse reconstruction and a dense reconstruction step. What that basically means is at the end of this, I want a mesh of the thing, along with the guess of where the cameras would be, essentially. Okay, so here it is in the final step. It made the mesh, and now it's just processing it. And what you can expect is any moment now, it will, boom, it will import right into Blender. What you're going to see is it's like, whoa, that, that's wrong. That's not the concrete I was expecting. Really, you just have to rotate it. It's on the other side. Take this. I'm going to rotate it to the orientation that I want. And you can see it came with a sparse point cloud. That's from the sparse reconstruction step. I just put this in here so that you don't have to run it before knowing for sure, okay, this is going to work. And then you can run the uh, dense step. But this is all we want. And you can see it also tried to photogrammeterize all the surrounding surface. Now, of course, in this case, I don't want the surrounding model, unless you do. Uh, I just want the concrete block itself. You could do this with Booleans, and we might do that. But because this is such a simple shape, it's basically like a rectangle, I think we can get away with a selection. Go into edit mode. I'm just going to highlight the section that I want, which is roughly this. When I turn overlay back on, you can see our selection. Control I invert. So it's everything except this concrete block and delete. If you want to be more exact with this, I'm just going to align all our orientations over here. And then this time we can totally run a Boolean. So I'm just going to scale this up. We're going to use a difference on the bottom of the mesh over here. Add a Boolean modifier, set it to difference. Actually set it to fast. Otherwise you are in trouble. It can take a bit. And select the cube. Apply the modifier. Delete the cube. And then finally to get rid of these stragglers, instead of like selecting them, which can be a pain, a tip is you hover over the main thing, the main island. You hit L, which means select linked. It will select that relevant island. Invert the selection and then delete. Uh, to clean it up. And there we go. That is our concrete block. Now, mind you, this was in low quality. So even in low quality, it came out to be a little under a million faces. So you can guess how unwieldy, especially high can be. I would honestly just recommend using medium. I just want to do one more demo. I'm going to replace my data set with, let's say, the coffee data set, because this is going to be a bit more of a complicated case with the shiny floor and everything. Just change your path, save the file. And then for this one, remember, we want to keep the console on. I'm going to go for a medium reconstruction. And while we're here, I'll just say there are advanced settings. All you need to know is this one, variable zoom, you keep off. Unless in your images you zoomed in and out, there's variable focal lengths, there's variable zoom. Ideally, you didn't do that. I am going to enable show directory, which will show us what it's doing under the hood. Additionally, I would highly, highly recommend you click this question mark button. It will open up a kind of a tutorial section. There I am. But you can read everything you need to know for installation, etc. Other than that, I'm not interested in the sparse point cloud. It will still calculate that because it needs to, but I don't need it to be outputted. And I think 
we are ready to go. So I'm just going to let this run because it's medium. I expect it to take closer to five to 10 minutes instead of like three minutes. But you can see this folder opened, which it didn't do before. That was because of the show directory. And here you can see everything it's doing under the hood. So it's making a, a coal, what's called a coal map database. And it will then start generating these D maps stand for depth maps. So I'm just going to let this run for a second. Okay, we're in the final stretch. The folder auto deleted, great. And then it imported in our model. So let's reorient this and we're going to do a very similar setup. Again, go into edit mode and make the selection you care about, which we can reveal, control I to invert and then delete vertices. We can also get rid of the ground object in the way that we know, scale up a cube, put it slightly above the ground, and then we're going to cut that away with a mesh boolean, set to fast, set to different, select the cube, apply the modifier. And there we go. We have an extracted model of the coffee kind of thing. They, they call it a bag. By the way, extra tip, if you want, you can add a smooth modifier because it's super detailed and bumpy in this case. You can add a smooth modifier, set this bad boy to like 15, and that will clean up some of the um, high frequency detail. And then on top of that, you can throw it through a decimation step. And now this is a easier to deal with object at only 200,000 faces, whereas it was much more before. Now let's talk about a free alternative again. That was Blender Photoscan as an add-on, but there is a free way to do this. Let's talk about that right after this. So as mentioned before, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. You already know about them. It's the best place to make a website. And in fact, the documentation for the thing I just showed you, as well as the product page was made with Squarespace. So I legitimately use it. There are three features I think you might find interesting. The first of which, and it's, you know, the modern thing everybody's doing, AI integration. So you can fill out content and design entirely with AI, which is a super useful feature along with the asset library, which I also use all the time. You can host files, whether that be images, videos, whatever, and use that directly in your website. And, and then thirdly, because I run the business kind of thing on a uh, subscription model, Squarespace payments becomes useful to me because I can set that up easily. It accepts credit cards, PayPal, anything you would want it to. So head over to Squarespace, make a website. And when you're ready to take that thing alive, use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now let's talk about the alternative option. The free alternative we're going to be using, of which there are a few, kind of one of the standards, it's called Colmap. It's a structure for motion library. It's actually one of the underlying libraries, one of many that my add-on operates in. Go to the GitHub page, go to releases. You don't need to build this yourself. Just go to releases. And then as long as you have Windows, you can either download the CUDA version, which says I have an NVIDIA GPU, or you're out of luck and you get the non-CUDA version. Here it is right here. And when you open the folder, you're first of all going to see these two batch files. These are actually the ones we're going to use, but inside the bin, you can see all the stuff that makes this up. But you can keep it as simple as opening this cool map batch file. Okay, so this is the cool map GUI. It's pretty simple, but there's a whole bunch of numbers you could control if you want to. The first thing we need to do before anything is create a database. You can do this by control S for saving, and then you can dump this project file. I'll call this demo wherever you want to. You go to file, you go to edit project, and this is where it's going to ask you to make a database. What you need to know about Colmap is it makes this huge file that it modifies called the database. It's a .db file. This needs to be in a spot that you can find. And then we also say, what are the images we care about? I'm just going to put it on the desktop. So I'm going to call it my database. And for the images, I'm going to go with this coffee one. Remember, you want to keep a, a standard naming convention, but once you find it, click select folder and then hit save. There are basically three or four steps to make a model. We first have to again find features in the image, high contrast points. We need to match those between images or between cameras. We then reconstruct so we know where those cameras would have been and then we do a meshing and densifying step. For your purposes, go to processing, go to feature extraction. You can mess around with these numbers here, but I find that the default settings are pretty good. The only thing you might want to change is the kind of camera, but I'm going to hit extract and you can see in this log over here, it will show what it's doing. I'm going to do a feature matching step where it will again look for matching things between images. Generally, you're going to use exhaustive, but if you're doing more of a camera track where you want to compare one frame to the next one, you use a sequential. But I'm going to use exhaustive and it will look for matches. And you might see that I'm glitchy. That's because this is a intensive process. Okay, it's done feature matching. Now, the last thing you need to do is do the reconstruction. You can go into the reconstruction settings if you want, but these tend to get very, very technical. So I'm just not going to. So hit start reconstruction and you're going to see these cameras start populating guessing where they would have been and that's going to refine over time and you are going to see this colored point cloud of it I mean, you can kind of see it's generating this kind of coffee thing. One thing that was bothering me is since these cameras are so close, it's hard to see what's going on. But if you go to render options, there is a camera size operator that we can make much tinier. And this is our very, very sparse reconstruction. Okay, so now we are at the final step, which is dense reconstruction. I would not recommend using Colmap for this. It is very, very slow at this. But if you insist, you go to reconstruction, dense reconstruction, where you're going to see nothing is enabled, like you're not allowed to do any of these buttons. That is because you need to set a workspace. 
workspace. This is basically where it's dumping all your files for calculation. So I'm going to set a uh, workspace. So I'm going to go into the coffee folder. I'm going to select. And then you have to go through a few steps. So you need to, first of all, undistort the images. So let that run for a while. Okay. And now it has all of these images with their like undistorted counterpart. You now go through the stereo step. And really all I'm doing is I'm going through these buttons one after another. And this is where it starts taking a long, long long time. You might want to consider stepping away for like 10 or 20 minutes. Listen, I'm gonna be honest. I know this is a tutorial, right? And I have infinite time. I can edit. I don't know how long it's been since the last cut. Five, 10 minutes. It's not finishing anytime soon. So I'm just, here's what you're gonna do. Once you're done with this, you're gonna hit Fusion. Then you're gonna hit Poisson. Then you're gonna hit Dolani. Basically what these mean is we're talking about creating depth maps. Then we're using that to create a dense point cloud. And then we're doing meshing steps, okay? You literally just go down the list. I know it's a bit of a flex, a bit of a flex, but honestly, that's what you have to do and it does take forever like this will be a 30 or 40 minute process and i frankly do not want to do it so i will not do it okay it's official i'm closing the window what ever dude okay so there you go i made an add-on i found a way to promote it in a way that everybody gets what they want it's free a free alternative check it out if you want to now if you do read the freaking instructions and the documentation because if you don't have like a modern and new new computer with redistributables whatever there's probably a step that you're going to need to do in there to ensure compatibility so okay